Chapter Nineteen of Five Little Peppers Abroad. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Cynthia Lyons. Five Little Peppers Abroad by Margaret Sidney. Chapter Nineteen. Mr. King has a little plan for Polly. Jasper, exclaimed Polly, clasping her hands, do you suppose we'll ever get to a piano where it's all alone and nobody wants to play on it? But just you and I, finished Jasper. I declare I don't know. You see, we don't stay still long enough in any one place to hire a, de a decent one. And besides, father said, when we started, that it was better for us to rest and travel about without any practicing this summer. You know he did, Polly. I know it, said Polly. But, oh, if we could just play once in a while, she added mournfully. Well, we can't, said Jasper savagely. You know we tried that at Brussels when we thought everybody had gone off and those half a dozen is idiots came and stared at us through the glass door. And then they came in, added Polly with a little shiver at the recollection. But that big fat man with the black beard was the worst, Jasper. She glanced around as if she expected to see him coming down the long parlor. Well, he didn't hear much. There didn't any of them, said Jasper. That's some small satisfaction, because you hopped off the piano stool and ran away. You ran just as fast, I'm sure, Jasper, said Polly with a little laugh. Well, perhaps I did, confessed Jasper, bursting into a laugh. Who wouldn't run with a lot of staring idiots flying at one? He brought up in disgust. And we forgot the music, went on Polly, deep in the reminiscence. And we wouldn't go back, don't you remember, until the big fat man with the dreadful black beard had gone, for he'd picked it up and been looking at it. Yes, I remember all about it, said Jasper. Dear me, what a time we had. It's enough to make one wish that the summer was all over and that we were fairly settled in Dresden he added gloomily as he saw her face oh no exclaimed polly quickly and quite shocked to see the mischief that she had done we wouldn't have the beautiful summer go a bit faster jasper why that would be too dreadful to think of but you want to get at your music polly I'll fly at it when the time comes, cried Polly, with a wise little nod. Never you fear, Jasper. Now, come on, let's get Phronsie and go out and see the shops. Old Mr. King, in a nook behind the curtain, dropped the newspaper in his lap and thought a bit. Best to wait till we get to Lucerne, he said to himself, nodding his white head. Then, says I, Polly, my child, you shall have your piano. And when their party were settling down in the hotel at Lucerne, ending the beautiful days of travel after leaving Munich, Jasper's father called him abruptly. See here, my boy. What is it, father? asked Jasper, wonderingly. The luggage is all right. It's gone up to the rooms, all except the portmanteau, and Francis will go down to the station and straighten that out. I'm not in the least troubled in regard to the luggage, Jasper, replied his father testily. It's something much more important than the luggage question about which I wish to speak to you. Jasper stared, well knowing his father's views in regard to the luggage question. The first thing that you must unpack, the very first, old Mr. King was saying, is your music. Don't wait a minute, Jasper, but go and get it, and then call Polly. And—' "'Why, father!' exclaimed Jasper. 
there isn't a single place to play in you don't know how people stare if we touch the piano we can't hear father there's such a crowd in this hotel you do just as i say jasper commanded his father and tell polly to get her music and then do you two go to the little room out of the big parlor and play to your heart's content and he burst into a hearty laugh at jasper's face as he dangled a key at the end of a string before him now do i believe father that you've got polly a piano and a little room to play in cried jasper joyfully and pouncing on the key you go along and do as i tell you said mr king mightily pleased at the success of his little plan and don't you tell polly pepper one word until she has taken her music down in the little room as jasper bounded off on the wings of the wind and in that very hotel was the big fat man with the dreadful black beard resting after a long season of hard work but polly and jasper wouldn't have cared had they known it as long as they had their own delightful little music room to themselves as they played over and over all the dear old pieces and polly revelled in everything that she was so afraid she had forgotten i really haven't lost it jasper she would exclaim radiantly after finishing a concerto and dropping her hands idly on the keys and i was so afraid i'd forgotten it entirely just think i haven't played that for three months jasper king well you haven't forgotten a bit of it declared jasper just as glad as she was you didn't make any mistakes hardly polly oh yes i made some said polly honestly whirling around on the piano stool to look at him oh well only little bits of one said jasper those don't signify i wish father could have heard that concerto what a pity he went out just before you began it but somebody else on the other side of the partition between the little music room and the big parlor had heard and he pulled his black beard thoughtfully with his long fingers then pricked up his ears to hear more and it was funny how almost every day whenever the first notes on the piano struck up in mr king's little music room the big fat man who was so tired with his season of hard work never seemed to think that he could rest as well as in that particular corner up against that partition and no matter what book or paper he had in his hand he always dropped it and fell to pulling his black beard with his long fingers before the music was finished and then oh polly come child you have played long enough from mother fisher on the other side of the partition or old mr king would say no more practicing today miss polly or phronsie would pipe out polly grandpapa is going to take us out on the lake do come polly and then it was funnier yet to see how suddenly the big fat man with the dreadful black beard seemed to find that particular corner by that partition a very tiresome place and as the piano clicked down its cover he would yawn and get up and say something in very rapid german to himself and off he would go forgetting all about his book or newspaper which very likely would tumble to the floor and flap away by itself till somebody came and picked it up and set it on the sofa one morning old mr king hurrying along with his batch of english mail to enjoy opening it in the little music room where jasper and polly were playing a duet ran up suddenly against a fat heavy body coming around an opposite angle oh i beg your pardon sir exclaimed mr king in great distress the more so as he saw that the stranger's glasses were knocked off his nose by the collision 
I do trust they are not broken, he added in a concerned tone, endeavouring to pick them up. But the big man was before him. Not a beat, not a beat, he declared, adjusting them on his nose again. Then he suddenly grasped old Mr. King's hand. And I be very glad, sir, very glad indeed, that I have run into you. Indeed! exclaimed Mr. King, releasing his hand instantly, and all the concern dropping out of his face. "'Very glad, indeed,' repeated the big man heartily. Then he pulled his black beard and stood quite still a moment. "'If you have nothing more to remark, sir,' said Mr. King haughtily, "'perhaps you will be kind enough to stand out of my way and allow me to pass.' and it would be as well for you to observe more care in the future, sir, both in regard to your feet and your tongue, sir. Yes, I am very glad, began the big man again, who hadn't even heard Mr. King's tirade, for now, and he gave his black beard a final twitch, and his eyes suddenly lightened with a smile that ran all over his face. I can speak to you of dis ting that is in my mind, your— I want to hear nothing of what is on your mind, declared old Mr. King, now thoroughly angry. Stand aside, fellow, and let me pass, he commanded in a towering passion. The big man stared in astonishment into the angry face, the smile dropping out of his own. I beg to excuse myself, he said with a deep bow, and a wave of his long fingers. Will you pass? And he moved up as tightly as possible to the wall. Old Mr. King went into the little music room in a furious rage, and half an hour afterwards Polly and Jasper, pausing to look around, saw him tossing and tumbling his letters and newspapers about on the table, fuming to himself all the while. "'Father has had bad news,' exclaimed Jasper, turning pale. "'Something about his agents, probably.' "'Oh, dear me, and here we have been playing,' cried Polly in remorse, every vestige of colour flying from her cheek. "'Well, we didn't know,' said Jasper quickly. "'But what we, can we do now, Polly?' he turned to her appealingly. "'I don't know.' She was just going to say helplessly, but Jasper's face made her see that something must be done. "'Let's go and tell him we are sorry,' she said. "'That's what Mamsie always liked best if she felt badly.' So the two crept up behind old Mr. King's chair. "'Father, I'm so sorry,' and "'Dear Grandpapa, I'm so sorry,' and Polly put both arms around his neck suddenly. "'Eh, what?' cried Mr. King, sitting bolt upright in astonishment. "'Oh, bless me, children, I thought you were playing on the piano.' "'We were,' said Polly, hurrying around to the side of the table, her face quite rosy now. "'But we didn't know,' and she stopped short, unable to find another word that you felt badly finished jasper oh father we didn't know that you got bad news he laid his hand as he spoke on the pile of tumbled up letters bad news ejaculated old mr king in perplexity and looking from one to the other no we didn't repeated polly clasping her hands dear grandpapa we truly didn't or we wouldn't have kept on playing all this time. Mr. King put back his head and laughed long and loud, as he hadn't done for many a day, his ill humor dropping off in the midst of it. The letters are all right, he said, wiping his eyes. Never had better news. It was an impertinent fellow I met out there, that's all. Father, who has dared? began Jasper with flashing eyes. "'Don't you worry, my boy. It's all right. The fellow got his quietus. Besides, he wasn't worth minding,' said Mr. King carelessly. "'Why, here is your mother,' turning to Polly. "'Now then, Mrs. Fisher, what is it? 
for I see by your eye some plan is on the carpet. Yes, there is, said Mrs. Fisher, coming in with a smile. The doctor is going to take a day off. Is that really so? cried Mr. King with a little laugh. What? Not even going to visit one of his beloved hospitals? While Polly exclaimed radiantly, Oh, how perfectly elegant! Now we'll have Papa Doctor for a whole long day. Phronsie, who had been close to her mother's gown during the delivery of this important news, clasped her hands in a quiet rapture, while Polly exclaimed, Now, Grandpapa, can it be the Regi? Jasper echoing the cry heartily. I suppose it is to be the Regi, assented old Mr. King, leaning back in his chair to survey them all. That is, if Mrs. Fisher approves. We'll let you pick out the jaunting place, turning to her, seeing that it is the doctor's holiday. I know that Dr. Fisher wants very much to go up to the Regi, said his wife, in great satisfaction as the turn the plans were taking. "'And we'll stay overnight, father,' cried Jasper, "'won't we?' "'Stay overnight?' repeated his father. "'I should say so. "'Why, what would be the good of our going up at all, pray tell, "'if we didn't devote that much time to it "'and try have a try for a sunrise?' "'Where to go up to the Regi?' exclaimed Polly, "'giving a little whirl and beginning to dance around the room, "'repeating, "'Where to go up to the Regi?' exactly as if nobody knew it, and she was telling perfectly fresh news. Here, that dance looks awfully good. Wait for me, cried Jasper, and seizing her hands, they spun round and round, Phronsie scuttling after them, crying, Take me too, I want to dance, Polly. So you shall, cried Polly and Jasper together. So they made a little ring of three, and away they went. Polly this time crying, Just think we're going to have the most beautiful sunrise in all this world. And on the other side of the partition, in his accustomed nook in the big parlor, the big fat man with a black beard sat. He pulled this same black beard thoughtfully a bit when Mr. King was telling about the impertinent fellow. Then he smiled and jabbered away to himself very hard in German, and it wasn't till the King party hurried off to get ready for the Regi trip that he got up and sauntered off. And almost the first person that old Mr. King saw on getting his party into a car on the funicular railway was the impertinent fellow, also bound for the top of the Regi. Oh, Grandpapa! Polly got out of her seat and hurried to him with cheeks aflame when midway up. "'I know, isn't it wonderful?' cried Grandpapa, happy in her pleasure and finding it all just as marvellous as if he hadn't made the ascent several times. "'Yes, yes,' cried Polly. "'It's all perfectly splendid, Grandpapa.' But, oh, I mean, did you hear what that lady said? And she dropped her voice and put her mouth close to Grandpapa's ear. I'm sure I didn't, said old Mr. King carelessly, and I'm free to confess I'm honestly glad of it. For if there is one thing I detest more than another, Polly, my girl, it is to hear people, especially women, rave and gush over the scenery." Oh, she didn't rave and gush, cried Polly in her whisper, afraid that the lady heard. She said, Grandpapa, that Herr Bariki is at Lucerne. Just think, Grandpapa, the great Herr Bariki. She took her mouth away from the old gentleman's ear in order to look at, in his face. Polly, Polly, called Jasper from his seat on the farther end. You are losing all this, as the train rounded a curve. Do come back. Now, I'm glad of that, exclaimed Grandpapa, in a tone of the greatest satisfaction, for I can ask him about the music masters in Dresden and get his advice, and be all prepared before we go there for the winter to secure the very best. 
and I can see him and perhaps hear him play, breathed Polly in an awestruck tone, quite lost to scenery and everything else. Jasper leaned forward and stared at her in amazement. Then he slipped out of his seat and made his way up to them to find out what it was all about. "'How did she know?' he asked, as Polly told all she knew. "'I'm just going to ask her.' But the lady, who had caught snatches of the conversation, though she hadn't heard Mr. King's part of it, very obligingly leaned forward in her seat and told all she knew. And by the time this was done, they all knew that the information was in the American paper printed in Paris and circulated all over the continent, and that the lady had read it that very morning just before setting out. "'The only time I missed reading that paper,' observed old Mr. King regretfully. "'And he is staying at our very hotel,' finished the lady, "'for I have seen you, sir, with your party there.' Another stroke of good luck, thought old Mr. King, and quite easy to obtain the information I want as to a master for Polly and Jasper. Now then, children, he said to the two hanging on the conversation, run back to your seats and enjoy the view. This news of ours will keep. So Polly and Jasper ran back obediently, but every step of the toilsome ascent by which the car pushed its way to the wonderful heights above, Polly saw everything with the words, Herr Bowricky is at our hotel, ringing through her ears, and she sat as in a maze. Jasper was nearly as bad. And then everybody was pouring out of the cars and rushing for the hotel on the summit, all but Mr. King's party and a few others, who had their rooms engaged by telegraphing up. When they reached the big central hall there was a knot of Germans all talking together, and on the outside fringe of this knot people were standing around and staring at the central figure. Suddenly someone darted away from this outer circle and dashed up to them. It was the lady from their hotel. "'I knew you'd want to know,' she exclaimed breathlessly, "'that Herr Bowricky himself, he came up on our train. "'Just think of it! "'The big man in the middle with the black beard!' "'She pointed an excited finger at the knot of Germans. "'Old Mr. King followed the course of the finger "'and saw his impertinent fellow who wasn't worth minding.' End of chapter 19